Hi kids, do you like violence? The Deviate Violent Collision has already released, but it's recent and I was gifted a couple to try and I couldn't keep the surprise from you. Angel has been highly requested and makes a return to the videos for this one, so stick around. Let's be honest, uh, bowl reviews are getting old no matter how good they are. Bowls keep coming out faster, there's dozens of channels now, and there's a lot of clickbait and nonsense out there, and it's hard to figure out who's trying to help you and who's trying to farm you for the clicks and views. Sure, the videos are a lot of work and time and money to produce, and getting as much traffic as possible by any means necessary is really tempting. But I'm tired of fighting that fight, so I'm stripping away all the nonsense for this one. Just a basic, simple, easy to understand look at the ball with plenty of explanation, but without any distractions, aside from the camera getting bumped a million times while filming for Angel. You're still getting some details, of course. We are bowling on the Kegel Chromium Challenge pattern at Royal Crest Lanes in Lawrence, Kansas. Thanks to them for always taking care of us. They're a big part of making the videos happen. We always use this pattern for testing because it's a good benchmark pattern. Everything hooks and kind of looks the same on a house shot, and most balls aren't designed for fresh sport conditions, but this one's right in the middle. It's not too easy, but it's not too tough, so it really helps us figure out where balls fit and how they relate and compare to each other. The graph is linked in the description if you want to take a look at the details. Angel layout information is up on the screen for those that understand, and if you don't know what all the numbers mean, I have Storm's layout system videos linked in the description that will teach you everything you need to know about cores, core dynamics, and layouts. The Violent Collision comes polished out of the box, but shiny stuff is usually over under for Angel, so it got the typical treatment of down to 1000 grit and then finished with Storm's reactor scuff, which gets it to about 3000 grit, which blends it out without making it too much earlier or smoother. I left mine out of the box, which we'll see later, and I also hit it with a 2000 pad and threw it some more, so you'll get to see a lot of different surface looks from a couple different sides of the lane. The Violent Collision is a very strong asymmetric pearl ball. The link to the ball page is in the description if you want the details and numbers. It does feature the HK22 base cover formula, the dot tech, and Dynamicore, and again, if you don't know what any of that means, it's all explained in depth on the balls page on the website. I tend to clutter videos up needlessly trying to explain everything in every video, which makes it drag for the more knowledgeable bowler, but at the same time it isn't quite enough for the newbies, so if you know, cool, if not, hit up the website. Obviously this kind of ball reaction is an angel's wheelhouse. It's the heavy rolling tumbly shape that gradually slows down and doesn't rev up super fast. Heavy rolling means it looks like it wants to dig through the lane. That's also what helps it want to slow down. The core is really trying to help it hook as much as possible. Tumbly means that it looks like a big rock kind of tumbling down a hill. It's just a term used to help describe the general reaction shape, which helps to relate and compare it to other balls. That gives it the nice combination of some length and some shape, but a lot of stability and a lot of control at the same time. It's a it's a best of both worlds type of reaction that makes it a it makes it a really good ball down from earlier smoother stuff like Columbia's new Pure Madness when the lanes start to transition. Other balls that have this same kind of reaction shape are the Summit Peak, which I'll show later as a comparison. Now the Peak is a symmetric ball, so this one is like an asymmetric version of it. The original Nova is also similar, but it's a handful of boards weaker. Uh, the Exotic Gem, uh, which is it's a little earlier and smoother, but of similar strength. And then the original Emerge. Now, one of her favorite balls of all time is the Radical Inferno, for those who go that far back. This one reminds her a lot of it. This one is just a little sharper. Looking at the peak, a very familiar rolls. The peak is just slower or smoother. Same layout, same surface, and this is a great illustration of symmetric versus asymmetric. Asims like the Violent have more torque, which kind of help force them to finish on the back end. Even a stronger symmetric ball like the peak doesn't have the same kind of punch down lane. Uh, very similar reactions, but symmetrics are generally used to help control too much shape if the bowler either has a higher rev rate or the pattern itself has really strong back ends. And ASIMs are generally used for if the bowler is lower rev or lower power and needs help getting a ball to punch down lane, or if the pattern is longer and heavier and the back ends are smooth. Flipping to the left side, throwing it shiny first, I've got to be nicer to it from straighter. Again, it's really strong, so I have to raise my speed and lower my rev rate a little to make it work from straighter, but it does allow me to blend the shape or reduce the back end strength. Some shiny ASIMs, like the Theorem, are just sharp and very responsive and need to be given room no matter what. 
but because the Violent rolls heavier, slows down, and doesn't rev up as quickly as the Theorem, it cuts the friction response down. This is a nice option for when you need a stronger ball with shiny pearl length, but not the flippy or super responsive move on the back end. As I get deeper, I'm just slightly slowing my speed down and slightly raising my rev rate, because it's so strong, it's still doing plenty of work on its own, so I'm not having to help it much. Uh, matter of fact, I'm still having to make sure I give it some room and don't get too slow or rev it up too much. It's just, it's doing whatever I ask it to without me having to force it to cover the boards. Now, Surface is really mathematical and predictable, so don't be afraid to try it out or experiment with it. You can always change it or change it back if you don't like what you did. As expected, after taking a 2000 pad to it lightly by hand, it still looks similar, it's just a little smoother on the back end, which increases the control slightly without costing me too much length or shape. More surface will make the ball a little to a lot stronger, earlier and smoother, depending on how rough you go, while less surface, or more shine, will make the ball weaker, longer and sharper. You won't know what the right surface is for you, or the ball, or the conditions until you try it out and experiment with it. Don't overcomplicate it and don't worry too much about the numbers. All you need to know is how you got it there. The surface of this ball obviously isn't a hard fresh 2000 grit like it would come out of the box or off a resurfacing machine, but if I like this surface, which I do, I know I got it here with a mildly worn 2000 grit Aberlon pad by hand and that's all that matters. The more you use surface, the more you get used to it, and the more you realize it's not that complicated. Rougher is stronger and smoother, shinier is weaker and sharper, and that's it. A quick buzz through a few one-shot comparisons on the way out to show you where it fits. It's a great ball down from Columbia's new Pure Madness, a very similar shape, the Pure is just quite a bit earlier and smoother, plus a couple boards stronger. It's a nice step sideways from Brunswick's new Ultimate Defender. Again, very similar shape, the Ultimate is just kind of between the Pure and this one. Uh, it's a little longer and sharper than the Pure, but earlier and smoother than the Violent, however it's virtually the same strength as the Violent. The Violent is also a step sideways from the Theorem. The Theorem is also about the same strength, it's just a little longer and quite a bit more responsive, so if the Theorem is too sharp, the Violent offers more control, and if the Violent is too slow or smooth, the Theorem of course offers more punch. Last one and going completely sideways, it's a ball up from something like the Journey. Very similar shapes, the journey is just a step down across the board. It's quite a bit easier down the lane, it doesn't roll as heavy, but still has the tumbly, slower revving shape. It's great for when you want a similar look to the Violent, but in a weaker package. Down in the description is a link to Bowler's Mart that will get any of the balls featured in this video ordered for you. I do have to note that I do receive a 5% commission on all sales through the links. And of course, don't forget my code ROSEDALL10 to get 10% off your order at checkout at Coolwick. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.